doing some epoxy filling today on a couple of bodies. Actually, I did this one the other day. Got a coat on the back sides, the upper uh, binding here, which is a Coca Cola radial binding, and the radial rosette here. Uh, turned out pretty well. This is just about ready for uh, this first coat to be uh, lightly sanded, and then the uh, second and uh, and third coats. Hopefully, the epoxy finishing resin. You can find this in most hobby shops. It's an amber colored hardener with a clear resin uh, mixed. Um, one to one. Uh, typically, I use a small measure to cup like the resin. Oh, oh! By the way, you could be working also with uh, the West System, which is uh, 105 resin and a 205 or 206 hardener with the mini pumps. Uh, works as well. Uh, isn't quite as amber as the uh, Z epoxy, but uh, doesn't sand quite as nicely. I sort of prefer the Z epoxy. Um, a couple other things we're going to use. Uh, we've got a a Tory. Uh, window washing squeegee. This is about a six inch long squeegee. You can get this at uh, uh, any of the uh, home stores, Home Depot, Lowe's, etc., or something like it. It has a very heavy weight uh, rubber blade, <clears throat> square edge, about an eighth of an inch thick, and uh, this is going to give us a real good um, uh, squeegee action and finish on the resin. We're going to avoid a lot of the sanding that some folks end up doing when they're working with epoxy fillers on guitars because we're actually going to squeegee off the uh, the excess rather than leave it We've on. We've also got coat. protective gear, gloves. Uh, obviously you also, uh, if you're uh, susceptible to uh, uh, the uh, vapors uh, from epoxy, you might want to uh, go masked. I don't seem to have a problem with it. And uh, nitro rubber gloves. Uh, real important to use nitro rather than latex. Latex will actually uh, start dissolving with some of the materials in the epoxy resin. We're actually going to use our fingertips to uh, apply and to smooth some of the areas of the guitar. That we're going to mix up a little bit of epoxy. As I mentioned earlier, just enough to cover a quarter inch or so. Okay, once I've applied the bottom of the cup, uh, a little bit to the surface here. I'm actually going to uh, start working the uh, squeegee back and forth. So I'll carry some up here, carry some back here, and I'll start working at an angle to the grain orientation here. And that's going to force more epoxy into the grain. One thing that I'll see is as I squeegee, see some air bubbles pop up from the uh, surface, and that's the resin being pushed into the pores of the wood and the, uh, the air being forced out. And that's exactly what you want to see. Keep working the surface with uh, fairly resin rich with a fair amount of pressure until you don't see quite as much of that. And I see a little bubble pop up there, a little area. Let's go ahead and work it a couple more times. And I'll get that carried over toward the edges. You notice that the epoxy gets a little bit foamy, that's fine. Uh, there's still plenty of uh, resin there to get down into those areas. What I'm going to start doing now is actually work off the edge. You have to be careful that you don't have any big drips and runs. But uh, try to uh, decorate your bench top or the other side of the guitar. It's one of the reasons why this orientation works pretty well. I'm going to actually work this over the edge. And I've got this whole area up here that really didn't get much resin on it. So I'm going to continue to work the resin. I've got about 15 minutes to um, work this before it starts stiffening up enough where you notice some problems with it. Now once I think I've got Pretty much all those pores filled. I'll do one last series of chevroned passes. In other words, running about 45 degree angle across the wood, trying to get the last bit of this epoxy in. Get this area up here. So 
think I've got all the resin I want on there. I'm going to take a paper towel, get a little bit of uh, alcohol on it to uh, cut the resin. Alcohol is a pretty good solvent for uncured epoxy. And I'm going to get this foamy residue off of here. Because now we want to remove any excess epoxy. Great. So you can see this is, uh, I've picked up that epoxy, and now that the squeegee has been cleaned, we're going to work the epoxy lengthwise, and it's just going to be passes. And this is sort of like French polishing in the sense that you want to fly on and fly off. You don't want to stick the squeegee on, run it to the end, and lift it off. You want to glide it on and off, and that will minimize any of these uh, areas that are, are thin or have insufficient resin because you press down. So I'm going to start right here. Got a little area over here. I'll just glide on. Pretty good looking first coat. I've got a few areas here that are a little thick, and I'm just going to use a glove uh, finger and pick up on that. I'll actually take the guitar out and see if there's any areas here where I can just drag a finger across. What will happen is you'll drag your finger across the epoxy, it'll show a dull streak for a moment and then the epoxy will level again and you'll be fine. Now I'm going to check around the edges. And you can see that's a very uniform coat of epoxy. Really, really looks pretty good and you can see the figure beginning to be uh, highlighted, uh, particularly when you bounce the light just right, that nice chevron figure. with the couple of areas with the popsicle sticks in here. I'm using the same batch that I used for the uh, top, so maybe a little bit shy. What I'll do is I'll use the edge of the squeegee here to distribute. And keep in mind, we want to get enough resin on so that we actually get the pores uh, filled. It's not enough to just wet the surface out. You really want to have enough resin where you can force it down. I don't really have that much in the way of problems with uh, drips and runs. If I get the application on and then I can squeegee end for end, I'll make my first pass just a partial. I'll wipe off the excess epoxy. I'll start from just beyond where we applied epoxy on the back, run in this direction. Still got a little bit of and back in the other direction. Again, light pressure here. We're really trying to just get a good solid layer. I had to stop here because we're going into the area. I'll run back because I've still got a few areas that look a little bit juicy, a little bit wet. Keep in mind we want this first coat to be down in the pores. Not much of anything on the surface, just enough to uh, give us the color change and wet things out. And I should be able to actually do a pretty fair job of getting this on the rosette to the top wood. I'll take a paper towel, fold it in eighths, fold it in sixteenths, and now I can place it on the edge outside the ring, pull it into the center, lift it. I've got a little bit of epoxy on there. I'll do the same thing here with a fresh surface. With a paper towel and get it off. Okay, final thing. A little bit of very careful finger action to smooth things out. So now we have z the rosette, 
you can see that that has popped the cherry burl. Got a few little bits of paper towel in there. Again, those would sand off well, but we'll clean them off.